I'm off script. Normally, at this point, I am reading something that I've written well in advance. When I get to a place to film, there should be no surprises. But this was so far ahead of anything that I imagined before coming here that I've had to throw out every word I've written. So this is just me uh, vlogging, I guess. Um, it's going to get edited together. I'm going to tell you the story of what may be the most impressive home project I've ever seen in my life. So I put a call out last year uh, asking for interesting things in the world that people were affiliated with that, uh, that might show on this channel and got a lot of suggestions in. And one of them was from uh, a couple of folks in Italy who had built a submarine simulator. Now, I've previously filmed in a tank simulator from the 1970s in Germany. Uh, it's wonderfully analogue. There's this big box that bounces along uh, and this little model world that this tank goes through. Uh, and it turns out they had something similar for submarines, only with a real tiny submarine in a little tank. I'm like, that is great. That's going to make a, a brilliant story. I'll go out. And I thought I knew what I was getting myself into because it's going to be this little remote operated vehicle, this little sub that goes around a pond and then they're going to send video from that uh, back to like a little controller on a screen in a room and uh, great, love a little video. So I get here uh, and I'm met by Marco and Danilo who are the, the two main people behind it. There's a whole team who've done all sorts of things on this but they, they take me in and my first clue that this is more than I thought it was is the startup sequence. This is built like it's some sort of fancy escape room or maybe even a theme park attraction but like there is a whole unlocking sequence where they boot up the submarine that we're going to walk into and there's a big wheel that clunk unlocks you pull open the pressure door you walk in and like i'll show you my reaction it's it's a lot the badge on your left oh badge on my, badge on my left slide welcome Oh, wow. <laughs> this is incredible. Closing control room sector. <laughs> Mission confirm. Explore preliminary checklist. So right away, this is not some little thing in the corner of a room. This is uh, this is what set designers would call a 360 experience. Uh, it doesn't matter where you look. This is a submarine as far as the people in there are concerned. Um, I sat in the wrong chair. Okay. Um, the one at the front is for the captain, which is normally one of the team here. Uh, and the actual controls are in the back. So while I'm being blown away by the startup sequence that they're going through, that they know off by heart because they designed it, it turns out I should, I should actually have been in the back there. So we swap seats. And we go through the startup sequence. And it is this pre-rendered computer graphic sequence uh, where the submarine is miniaturized as if we were actually going to be put into, uh, into the real pond. Brilliant. And then I realized something. The room is moving. Abbiamo comunque scelto di usare dei motoriduttori elettrici invece che degli attuatori pneumatici perché il loro controllo di posizione è più semplice e non avevamo bisogno di potenze elevate. We are simulating something very slow, so we don't need the shaking uh, power of the modern uh, platform you can, you can find. So we built our own with uh, that objective in mind. So at this point I've just got this smile of joy on my face because I'm, <laughs> I'm just overwhelmed at the scale of this, of something that feels like a theme park attraction just sitting in an old 19th century mill in rural Italy. And then the camera feed turns on. We are, we are dropped into the pond. It's not like there's a, there's a drop. There's, there's like a clunk from the hydraulics. The camera feed turns on. And there is the world in front of us. This is actually in the lake. We are in. Is it? Definitely. This is the... Oh! Let, let <laughs> move. Is it drift? Lateral. Not Lateral. But we're actually, there's actual movement here. So it starts out with uh, Marco and Danilo on the controls, uh, just kind of showing me what to do and kind of showing me a couple of interesting things in the pond. But I start to pick up what's going on. I start to pick up how to use things. Uh, I go from just doing the rudder uh, to actually starting to control the depth a little bit and starting to control the tilt. It, it's got five degrees of freedom. Uh, so it will do uh, tilt, 
it will do your, uh, it will go forwards, backwards, left, right, and it will go up and down, five degrees. And all of these are controlled by separate things. And yes, like the picture quality is not spectacular. This is not a perfectly lit 4K HD camera on the front, but it's, it's an actual camera. For a moment, I feel like I'm controlling a submarine. Like, it works because, because there's this gentle motion as we go. When it gets put into full throttle, we get pushed back in our seats a little. When we stop, we rock forward. And it's, it's just, it's really clever. It's, it's really, really clever. So my plan is, we'll have a mosey around the pond, it'll be nice and gentle, and while that happens, I'll ask them the questions about how, why, every... yeah, no, I completely forgot how to do that later. Abbiamo cominciato questo progetto intorno agli anni 2009. Il sistema di movimentazione della batisfera è stato creato nel corso degli anni, prima il tilt, poi il, il roll, e i sistemi di controllo si sono evoluti nel tempo eh, diventando ora eh, cinque computer che dialogano tra di loro per controllare tutte le parti del simulatore e del sistema di brandeggio, quello che muove il sottomarino nel, nell'ambiente. Praticamente la nostra idea non è solo quella di visitare il laghetto che abbiamo costruito, questo in realtà serve solo per dimostrare quello che può fare. Quindi potremmo decidere di visitare laghi naturali più grandi, porzioni di stagni o addirittura anche all'interno di piccoli acquari. O ancora di più si potrebbe visitare in remoto luoghi lontani da dove siamo adesso, con una, connessione, con una buona connessione internet. Quindi ad esempio anche a livello didattico una scuola potrebbe fare un chiamiamo una visita di un lago in un'altra nazione o in un'altra regione del suo paese. Oppure all'interno di un museo naturalistico si potrebbero guardare delle vasche con animali, magari anche piccoli animali, che normalmente non sarebbero attraenti per dei bambini. Ma in questo modo i particolari vengono esaltati. You're saying this in completely the wrong order, by the way. I'm just telling the story as best I can. We continue exploring the pond and we go hunting for life. But before we can do that, there is an emergency on board. And look, I didn't know this was going to happen. Emergency what I should have done is hired a local production team and like sent them into recce in advance so, so I could be surprised by this, but the cameras would be in the right position. I didn't know there was going to be an emergency in the submarine and there was going to be a whole other room that I would have to go into okay. in order to try and fix the reactor core. Oh, but okay. there was, I mean, spoilers oh, if you're ever going to do this, but like, the scale of this, the little oh, okay. detailed touches, the things that Good. lit up, just absolutely incredible. So finally, we go searching for life, and there are a couple of newts at the bottom of the pond, because this is a natural pond. And they were very clear that they did not introduce the newts. You're not allowed to introduce the newts, they just built a very good pond, and the newts arrived on their own. This is real. This is not some Floridian theme park adventure. This is an actual, real, little submarine going around a pond. But that was the last surprise. Then they go and show me what the actual submarine is. I was absolutely convinced that it, that it was a real submarine. And it's a, it's on, is, that's is, so clever. That's, that's so that. clever. Because of course, I assumed it was gonna be a little ROV. It was gonna be a little floating submarine like the one they showed me the model of inside. It was gonna be just a miniaturized version of that with a camera on it and a cable. No, of course it wasn't. It's a big home-built XYZ plotter, like a thing from a 3D printer. I don't know what the technical term is, but it's a huge rig they've built with a pan-tilt zoom camera and a Logitech webcam on it. This is all homebrew. This is all made by them. Yeah. This is a proof of concept, but the limited number of people that could see these is because of we are not always here for uh, showing that. So if there's some science outreach fund in Italy out there who would like to build a version of this, you are the people to talk to. Yeah, sure. Non ho capito. Se c'è qualcuno fuori del che può eh, mettere i soldi per questo sì. esperimento. <laughs> 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 Noi siamo le persone con cui parlare. Sì, siamo le persone. This is never going to be some mass market public thing, not here. Um, if you are hoping to have a go, 
uh, you will probably be disappointed. Um, maybe if you're a local and you happen to be on their website on the day when they say there's some dates available, um, good luck. Uh, but this is not a thing meant for huge amounts of people in the public. This is a proof of concept. This is a passion project. This is something that was built because they wanted to build it. And maybe, maybe there's a version 2.0 that'll come in with some science foundation funding or something like that. I don't know. I, I kind of hope so. I would love loads of people to experience this. Um, but at the same time, there is something so charming about this wonderful thing that's just in the back of an old mill in Italy. Oxygen level low. Return to base.